So yesterday, after Trump was arrested, pled not guilty and let go, he flew to Florida and gave a speech at Mar-a-Lago. And first of all, uh, no gag order was placed on him. That's why he was able to give a speech. The judge actually said that they didn't want to go down that road, but could change their mind if Trump says or does things which could cross the line. And then the judge actually referenced these photos of Trump holding a baseball bat next to DA Alvin Bragg. So you can look at these photos right here. This is a tweet from Brooklyn Dad Defiant. He's like super liberal, always all over Twitter. Holy shit, I knew Trump was unhinged, but he posted a picture of him with a baseball bat next to the picture of Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg. This is straight up threat of violence. Innocent law abiding folks don't do that. Arrest him already. Um, and then the picture there is Trump. You can see him with the bat. This is, uh, he has, a t I don't know if that, that's not a tweet, is it? This is like truth, or is this a tweet? Does he, is he got truth social? I don't think Trump's on Twitter yet. Um, but he has this, he's retweeting this article, and this article has this as their, as their picture. It's him with the bat and Alvin Bragg. Well, then, you know, you always have to fact check everything. And, and then here's the fact check from Breitbart. Uh, says Donald Trump did not generate the baseball bat photo with Alvin Bragg. Uh, he didn't says he did not see the link preview for article that was shared. So the link preview had one picture of him holding the bat. That's the actual photograph of him holding a bat. It's not, you know, he's not next to Alvin Bragg or anything like that. It's just a picture. I don't know what that picture's from, but you know, some Oval Office something. And then the the article that was made put the picture of Alvin Bragg next to him. So. Uh, but the judge referenced this and said, you do this kind of stuff again, I might reconsider my gag order, okay? But at this point, no gag order on him. So that's why he was able to give his speech last night. Now, most networks aired the speech. And, um, you know, I mean, after all, this is a former sitting president who's been charged with 34 felonies. But Rachel Maddow, nope. She says she doesn't want to air lies. Here it is. Just one second. I need to tell you that right now, uh, the former president himself is making remarks tonight um, from his home in Florida. As far as we can tell, and what we were prepared for here is that this is basically a campaign speech in which he is repeating his same lies and allegations against his perceived enemies. It is just getting started. Um, so far, he's just giving his normal list of grievances. We don't consider that necessarily newsworthy, and there's a cost to us as a news organization of knowingly broadcasting untrue things. So uh, our deal with you is that we will monitor these remarks if he does say anything newsworthy, we will turn them around and report on that right away. But uh, for now, just know that it's happening and we're not taking it. There's a cost to us for knowingly, as a, as a news broadcast, for knowingly broadcasting untrue things. <laughs> okay, when has Rachel Maddow been the purveyor of all true things? This woman spent years promoting one of the biggest lies we've seen in our lifetime, Russiagate. And it wasn't just one lie. It was lie after lie after lie, and it went on for years. Now, Politico, of all outlets, even wrote this article about her called Rachel Maddow's Deep Delusion. Here's some uh, from the article. For the past two years, Rachel, this was written, by the way, in 2019. This delusion went on beyond that. But for the past two years, Rachel Maddow has been a hero of her own spy thriller. She's written, directed, and starred in a hit production based on the unlikely premise of a primetime case cable TV show host unraveling the most dastardly plot in American history, one opening monologue at a time. Only the story had a surprise twist at the end. She was completely wrong. Few people invested more in the Russia probe night after night, monologue after monologue, with an ever-building sense of anticipation. It is perhaps unfair to say that Maddow believed in a conspiracy theory, although her theory was quite literally that there was a conspiracy between Donald Trump and the Russians, perhaps an ongoing one. The Mueller probe was a real thing and obviously newsworthy, yet Maddow approached it with a notable conspiratorial cast of mind and style. She covered the story with a consistent breathlessness. She took evident pleasure over even minor jail sentences for minor players. No proceeding related to the probe was too small for her long, involved explications. She did dramatic readings of courtroom transcripts. 
Pervading it all was the sense that she could see the deeper forces behind the headlines. She could discern the plat pattern and all the dots, and you could too, as long as you paid close enough attention to her program. The reward would be everything finally making sense from the 2016 presidential election to President Trump's foreign policy, all traceable back to Russia and its sinister tentacles. She worried in March of 2017 that the Russians had not just stolen the election, but our government, quote, we are also starting to see what may be signs of continuing influence in our country, not just during the campaign, but during the administration, basically signs what could be a continuing operation, she said. She saw the installation of Rex Tillerson as Secretary of State in this light, quote, silencing the U.S. State Department, putting a friend of Vladimir Putin in charge at the U.S. State Department, who stands by quietly while the State Department gets hollowed out, gets gutted. That's a dream for Putin. Indeed, she saw most things in this light. No matter how alarming all this was, there was always an underlying sense of glee in Maddow's coverage. The bastards were finally going to get their due. The whole treacherous plot steadily coming undone via Robert Mueller's investigation and the brilliant long-form explications of it by America's champion at 9 p.m. Please set your DVRs. It was almost touching how excited Matt I was to come back from a trout fishing trip last Friday to host her show on an emergency basis upon the arrival of the long-anticipated report. Little did she know, she only was setting the stage for her own discrediting. Yes, she is discredited. Not because she got something wrong, but because she got something wrong and persisted with it over and over and over again. But... As a network, they don't want to be airing these untruths from Donald Trump. How could they? It would just cost them too much. Yet they still continue to air Rachel Maddow. Maybe this is actually why, you know, a lot of people wondered why Rachel Maddow got that really lucrative, amazing deal, yet she only has to host her show one day a week. Maybe this was why. Maybe they were paying her to step aside. <laughs> you were wrong for so long. We just can't, as a network, afford to keep you in front of the camera. Step aside. We'll give you a bunch of money, millions upon millions of dollars. We'll tell you you're doing something kind of fun on the background. You're going to be making documentaries or dealing with other projects that are going to be exciting and fun for you. And really, you're just, we're letting you save face because you were a ratings generator. You made big ratings for the network, but you were wrong the entire time while doing it, completely discrediting the network alongside yourself. Maybe that's why she got those multi-million dollar contracts. I guess it pays to be a liar. I don't know. Well, if you owe back taxes or have unfiled returns, don't be embarrassed. It happens to lots of people, especially now with the gig economy. So many people are just... You know, they're not really exactly sure, you know, the, the taxes just pile up, basically. So uh, don't deal with the IRS by yourself because that's going to be very stressful. And maybe you're not totally familiar with tax law, but don't worry about it. Tax Network USA is a nationwide tax resolution firm who can protect your rights, settle your back taxes. In some cases, they can even zero out your balance. So if you have years and years piling up and you're like, oh no, I just, you know, I was so used to working a corporate job where they took my taxes and now I'm a gig worker and oh no, it's all piled up. Okay, that happens. Uh, but they can help you zero out that balance. They are experts in all IRS programs. They understand tax law because it's likely you don't. I know I don't. Over the last 14 years, Tax Network USA has saved over a billion dollars in back taxes for their clients. They can even file your yearly return for you to protect you from audits. So whether you owe a few thousand dollars, a few hundred thousand dollars, a few million dollars, if you're lucky enough to, <laughs> to owe the IRS that much, um, they can help you. So even if you haven't filed in years, they can help you. Even if you have a payment arrangement already and you're making those payments, but you got a big balance, they can help you with that. Just visit taxnetworkusa.com slash Kim to find out more.